Hi guys, Action 007 Cinema here. Warning, spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna recap a 2013 American Japanese fantasy action movie called 47 Ronin. This movie is about the revenge path of 47 masterless samurai who became a Ronin. They have to fight to avenge their foregone master who had been framed by his own enemy. How will their story end? Let's find out together. The story begins with a little kid named Kai fleeing from Tengu. Tengu is a forest monster who uses black magic to groom children to be killers. His escape ended in the wilderness, where he was rescued by Asano, the Ako province's leader. Kai is a half-blood demon. Even though samurai are forbidden to have contact with demons, Asano still treated him as his own son. He's even close to Mika, Asano's only daughter, who already fell in love with Kai without her father's consent. Once upon a time, the Akko samurai were tasked to track down a monster, which belonged to a white vixen demon. The monster was instructed by Kira, Negato's chief, to assassinate Asano. In the process, one of the samurai, Yasuno, is almost killed by that monster. Kai arrived on time and spared him. With his powerful physique and skills, slaying the monster is a piece of cake for Kai. However, because Kai is an outsider, he is considered not a real samurai and an insult to samurai honor. Afterwards, Asano arrives and believes that Yasuno is the one who killed the monster. Kai then humbly returns the sword to him right away to honor him as a warrior. Asano's right-hand man, Oishi, was aware that the monster's killer was Kai, but he chose to overlook it in order to protect the Akko samurai's dignity. As a tribute, Yasuno is chosen as Akko's representative in the Shogun's tournament. But before leaving, Kai realized something was wrong. He noticed a white vixen had been staring at them. Kai, on the other hand, dismisses it as an ordinary vixen. After that, Mika pays a visit to Kai in his small isolated hut in the forest, the night after the monster hunt, to treat his wounds. Mika realized that Kai was the one who killed the monster, not Yasuno. Since Mika adores Kai, she believes Kai deserves to be treated like any other samurai. Although they share the same feelings, Kai is acutely aware of his position. He does not deserve to be loved by the daughter of Akko's leader. The scene moves to the Shogun's tournament. All Japanese citizens welcome Shogun Tokugawa. Kai realized that the white vixen demon he met earlier in the forest disguised herself as one of the concubines. Kai attempted to warn Oishi, but he didn't believe Kai. Eventually, Kai's words are proven when Yasuno is discovered to be poisoned and unable to compete in the tournament. To preserve Akko's honor, Kai replaces him in the Shogun's tournament. Unfortunately, Kai's broken sword led him to his defeat, destroying his samurai disguise in front of the Shogun. The Shogun is very angry and sentences Kai to death. Meanwhile, Mika couldn't bear it and prevented the executioner and saved Kai's life. Asano, who had been embarrassed in front of the Shogun, was forced to seek the Shogun's pardon to spare Kai and his daughter. Not finished with the intrigue of the problem, the white vixen demon and Kira took advantage of this incident. She dispatches a spider demon to possess Asano, led him to attempted Kira murders. The Shogun who saw the incident gave Asano a death sentence to atone for his crimes and return Akko's good name. And to avoid future feuds, Mika was forced to marry Kira. After that, Asano's samurai followers were forbidden from avenging Asano's death and were labeled as Ronin or No Man's Samurai. Kira, fearful of Oishi's vengeance, even throws Oishi alone into an exile. But Kira is unaware that his attempts to bring down the samurai were insufficient to deter them from seeking vengeance. One year later, Oishi returns from his exile. His sluggish face doesn't fade his grudge. He directed his son, Chikara, to gather his troops who had left Akko, in order to exact revenge on Kira. His need for soldiers forced him to find Kai, who has been exiled as a slave on the Dutch island. His journey was uneasy, he must persuade Kai, who was gradually going to lose his identity. Fortunately, Kai was awakened by his desire to prevent Mika's wedding and decided to collaborate with Oishi. After gathering the troops, Oishi divides some of his troops to spy on Kira's army, while Oishi and the rest head to Yuitsu, the village of Swordsmiths. But Kira, who has realized Oishi's vengeful intentions, destroys the village, ensuring that there would be no more swords to use for their vengeance. 
Aware of the situation, Kai suggests they go to the Tengu Forest, the last place to get a sword. After exhausting all other options, Oishi accepted Kai's invitation. After a sea of trees and weak old spirits, they found the place and Kai only let Oishi in to accompany him and warned him not to draw his sword under any circumstances. Kai realized that the Ronin shared the same grudge, but not with their will, so he only appointed Oishi, whom he judged to have a strong determination and could pass the test from his master. When Kai faces off against his old master, he is forced to use his black power so he can win. On the other hand, Oishi, who also received the test, was tempted to draw his sword when he saw his subordinates die one by one. When Oishi realized that it was just a test, he managed to keep his desire to draw a sword and finally passed the test and found the sword. After getting the sword, one of Oishi's subordinates is possessed by the white vixen demon and tells them fake information that Kira would be at his ancestral temple to ask a blessing for their marriage. Oishi, who is still unaware of this trap, rushes to the temple to end Kira life. But the white vixen demon who had been waiting for them immediately ordered her soldiers to kill Oishi and his troops. Oishi, who was too late to be aware of the trap, was forced to give up some of his men and withdraw the rest of his troops. The white fox demon who has been sure of Oishi's death brings the remains of Oishi's sword to Mika and Kira. Oishi, who has lost his fighting spirit, saw a little hope when Kai persuades him to launch a surprise attack on Kira, who has been convinced by their death. The situation is gradually improving, Kai's friends try to mend their relationship with him. Also Oishi who was trying to reawaken his Ronin's fighting spirit. They decide to rely on their last strength into vengeance, vowing to end their lives after completing the grudge as liberators from the cycle of vengeance and a symbol of their bravery. On the other side, the white vixen demon finds discrepancies through Kira divination. She tries to ignore it and cover up the truth by telling a false prophecy so that Kira won't be disturbed from carrying out his plan to marry Mika and rule Japan. When the revenge day has come, the remaining 47 Ronin decide to disguise themselves as an entertainer's troop who was invited by Kira to liven up his marriage. They were able to enter Kira's kingdom without raising any suspicions. Kira, who was distracted by the entertainer's appearance, was unaware that the Ronins were disarming one by one of his guards. Kira has no idea that the dance he is watching right now is the last dance he could see in his lifetime. Everything went swimmingly, Oishi who was disguised himself as the main character in the show, slowly advancing to take Kira's life. But unfortunately one of Kira's guards, who had escaped the ambush, immediately launched his arrows to stop Oishi from killing Kira. Kira, who is aware of the danger, immediately takes cover behind his guard and attempts to flee with Mika. The Ronin who had been waiting for the Day of Vengeance did not lose their guts even though they were surrounded by Kira troops. On the other side, Kira who escaped with Mika is now being pursued by Oishi and Kai. Kira, who is only concerned with his own safety, let Mika escape. While Kai was attempting to pursue Mika, Oishi saw this opportunity to pursue Kira with the intention of ending his revenge. Kira who can't hide anymore was forced to fight Oishi, and even though he had given up resistance his death is still unavoidable. His desire to survive was insufficient to fight Oishi's vengeance. On the other hand, on a way to save Mika. Kai must contend with a white vixen demon who has revealed his true form as a dragon. But Kai doesn't want to risk Mika likes and using his darkest power to kill the demon. The fight between the Ronins and Kira's soldiers was shown to end with Kira's head. The Ronins triumphed and their hatred for their former leader was fully avenged. Before fulfilling their oath, they come to Asanama's grave to calm his vengeance. Their happiness can only be felt for a short moment. When the Shogun saw this incident, he wanted to put them to death as criminals and for breaking the Shogun's rules, which forbade them from exacting revenge on Kira. But the Shogun who was touched by the Ronin who avenged their master gave them an honorable death as a samurai. Similarly, Mika and Kai's love story. Even though they were reunited, they never had the opportunity to have a relationship as a couple. Mika has no choice but to accept the Shogun's decision to allow Kai to die as a samurai, but their farewell won't prevent them from loving each other even in the next thousand lives. In the end of the story, the merciful Shogun, pardon Oishi's son, 
to continue his lineage as a samurai and become the next Akko's protector whereas the rest of the Ronin fulfill their last duty to die honorably as samurai in front of the Shogun, and memorized as a 47 Ronin who died honorably to avenge their master. Everything that comes in the future is a result of everything that we have done in the past. Each and every one of us has something or someone that we should hold in high regard and be duty-bound to protect and honor. What do you think about their honorable path of revenge? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching. And as always, see you next time.